Welcome cooks. Today we're going to make Zupa Toscana. This is a viral soup going around. It is a copycat from Olive Garden and it is a classic uh, Italian soup. But of course Olive Garden makes it completely different than how it really is. But it tastes delicious and today we're going to make it. So welcome to the Amy Learns to Cook Kitchen. Okay, so I'm going to put a little tiny bit of olive oil in here because I'm going to be cooking some bacon and I don't want it to stick initially. Um, so I have like a half a pound of bacon that I cut up into like bacon bits. And we're going to go ahead and cook this off until it is done. You can cook it to your own cook level, right? I usually do it somewhat crispy. I don't use, I don't leave it soft. So we're going to go ahead. It's starting good already, right? We're going to go ahead and cook off this bacon. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and take this bacon out of here and drain it. I got a lot of grease in there, so I got to get this grease out of here. Okay, so we're going to brown up some sausage. You can use whatever kind of sausage you want. If you want that already smoked like kielbasa stuff, use that. I just have the sausage that we like. You can use Italian sausage, whatever. This is, uh, <laughs> this is an, a uh, dupe, a copycat of an Olive Garden recipe that is not authentic whatsoever. Uh, usually this, um, soup was made with bread and beans and this is, their version is totally not Which authentic. is why it had so much liquid in it, so they could dip and use up their bread. Yeah. Except the American version is a little different. Yeah. Um, I made these into like little rough meatballs. I didn't in any way shape them into meatballs. I just cut the sausage into these little chunks. Uh, if you want to make them into meatballs, go for it. But Or you can just put the sausage directly in here and then um, Chunk it up. scramble it, okay. do a large scramble on it. Um, I just did it like this because it's easier for me to keep these little babies in chunks instead of completely scrambled. I don't know why, but my sausage needs a little bit of olive oil. So what we're going to do is we're going to cook this up. I have two a pound and a half, so we're going to be doing this in two batches, um, and then I'll be taking it out. So, oops, so when these are done, I'll be back. Okay, so we have our bacon cooked off. Yeah. We have our little uh, fake meatballs yeah. <laughs> cooked off. We cleaned out this pan, so you need to take all that grease out of there because I didn't do that one time and my soup was greasy. So I have a large, very strong onion. <laughs> and we're just gonna cook this off a little bit. I also have a little bit of um, chopped sweet red bell pepper. Some people don't put that, but I like it, so I'm putting it, right? There's absolutely no way that you can argue that if you put one thing versus another thing in this Olive Garden copycat soup, that it's not authentic. Because the soup is not authentic from the very beginning. No. So no matter what you put in here, don't let anybody tell you it's not authentic because the soup isn't. So we're just gonna uh, saute this until it gets translucent. Okay, that's looking pretty tasty. I have some garlic. Put in however much you want. I have like 16,000 cloves of garlic mixed, minced. 16,000 cloves. Sure. <laughs> like that fits in the garage. 
Huh? Like that fits in the garage. Yeah. 16,000 cloves of garlic. 16,000. No, I think I have like six. I might bloom a little bit of spices. A little bit of pep. I'm not going to do salt because we're using chicken broth. Better than bouillon. And I don't want to oversalt it, so just put a little granulated garlic in here. Boom that up for a second. Booming just means put a little heat on it and it goes woo, right? Sure. It becomes what it wants to be or what it's destined to be. That is what it does. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to put our sausages back in here. <laughs> we're going to put our bacon, bacon back in here. Let me go get some chicken broth. Okay, so we have a whole bunch of goodness in this pot. So what we're going to do is we're going to add some potatoes. I have some Yukon Gold, the yellow potatoes. What I do is I cut them, I slice them into eh, chunks, and then I, so it comes out like a moon, and then I chop those in half, and it comes out like a half moon, right? You could just do a regular chunk. You could do it any way you want. So I'm going to go ahead. Put, this is this was like four big potatoes. So maybe four to five, depending on how much you have. So Boo, you're using Yukon because you're afraid russets might fall apart yeah. and make mashed potatoes by the time it's done. So this is one place where you have to kind of use your judgment, right? So let me put the stock in here first. So one time I used russets and I let it go too long and they were completely toasted, right? Um, there's some chicken broth. I have like six cups. But depending on how much... Uh, how much sausage and stuff you use, you can put in whatever amount you want. And how much liquid you want. That looks mighty fine. So I used russets and I, they, they blew up, right? So I changed it to a more hard, a little bit more waxy, not a waxy like a uh, red, but a little bit more substantial of a potato in that it will stay together. Um, so when these potatoes are like 80% done, I put a little bit of a slurry in that. Like all the dupe recipes that are out there, half of them put a slurry and half of them don't. I'm gonna do a one tablespoon slurry in there. So I'm gonna do it when these potatoes are 80% done. So by the time that slurry works, maybe 10, 12 minutes, um, those potatoes aren't blasted, right? So that's just how you do it. So. If, we're going to bring this up to a boil here, a uh, uh, simmer. I'm going to put the lid on when it comes up to that simmer. And I'm going to take the lid off. I'm going to lower the temperature so we get a low simmer, right? And then... Because we want to cook the potatoes. We want to get everything nice and cooked well. Yeah, right? but you don't want to overcook it. Right. You don't want to overcook the potatoes. Mm -hmm. So we're going to bring them up. I'm going to lower it down. And then we're going to cook it till the, like I said, till the potatoes are like 80% tender. So we'll be back. Okay, so the soup is looking really good. I have it down low right now. I'm going to put a slurry in here, a tablespoon of cornstarch dissolved in a little bit of water. We're going to go ahead and put that in here. We're going to let this cook for five, ten minutes or so until that's not a lot of cornstarch for this amount of liquid. So it's just going to give a slight thickening. That's it. And so we're going to let this go a few minutes and we're going to let that happen. Just taking a little taste. Um, I saw that. Mm. It doesn't really need much seasoning wise. 
So I'm going to put a cup of heavy cream. I am using this country crock plant cream because I am allergic to dairy. But if you can use heavy cream, go for it. And so that's going to give us a like a creamy look to it. And we're going to go ahead. I've got four cups of spinach that I've washed. Olive Garden puts kale. I'm putting spinach because I like spinach. So that's what I'm putting. Mm. Doesn't take too long for the spinach to cook. Mm. Looks amazing. So as soon as this spinach is done, we'll be back. Okay, our soup is ready. <laughs> this is one of my favorite soups. It is absolutely delicious. Take a look at that. And this is our soup. Oh my gosh. Absolutely beautiful. And the broth is delicious in this soup. It is delicious. Oof. It looks so good. Whoa! Mm. Wow. Olive Garden did knock it out of the park, even if it's not like your traditional Zuba Toscana. It's a very good version. Well, it's not a version. Whatever they did, it does taste good. It's a good soup. Okay, Boo, you ready for some soup? Sure. Got a little red there. Oh, hey. Thank you, Boo Boo. I think this soup is like one of my favorites. One of my new favorites. It's so good. Um, I'll concur with that. <laughs> so like I said, there's nothing authentic, authentic about this soup at all. And you can make changes, no matter, well, you can always make changes, no matter what you want. No matter what anybody says, right? You have the freedom. Um, let's take a taste. Mm -hmm. Taste done, the meat. This soup is fantastic. Like, it is over the top. I'll give it to Olive Garden, even though they ripped it and wrecked it. They actually didn't wreck it. Mm. Just call it something else, right? <laughs> wow. Mm. So the Olive Garden has kale. Go ahead and put kale if that's what you want. I put spinach. It's delicious, right? I'm on my way to eat the soup. I hope you enjoy it. Um, don't forget to subscribe. And the recipe will be out on my website. So the link will be in the description. I hope you enjoy it.